This is video 20 in the series of reinforced concrete slabs. In this video, we will talk about the method of yield lines, which is, as we know, an upper bound method. Work done equals force times displacement. You uh, can apply this on a vertical force N and his displacement in the same direction as where the force is acting. Then the work done equals the vertical force N times the sag or the deflection delta. But you can also have work done uh, with a bending moment and then the work done is the bending moment times the sag or displacement in the direction of the action which means it's a rotation angle or angle of rotation so the work done is then m times theta which is the angle angle of rotation the method uh, is based on the idea that the energy by the expended by the load must be equal than the energy dissipated by the rotation. And E is the internal energy expended by the moving loads. I will uh, refer it as energy uh, uh, coming from the loads. And D is the internal energy dissipated by rotation about the yield lines or internal energy. The expanded uh, energy or the external energy uh, is in fact the summation of all vertical loads times their displacement. And it must be equal to the summation of all bending moments of the yield lines projected uh, directly to the rotation axis, which gives you a distance L, times the angle of rotation theta. Just give an example. Consider a slab which is only simply supported on two opposite sides because of symmetry, the yield line is. Uh, in the middle of the slab. This is the slab loaded by a load Q and this is the yield line and you have a mechanism and there is a rotation about the angle theta and the displacement is delta. First we will look at the energy, uh, external energy uh, expanded by the load moving E, which is the load on the first uh, uh, zone of, of the slab, the first uh, part of the slab, which is Q, total load times B times L over 2, and the mean displacement delta of the slab is of course delta divided by 2. And then we do exactly the same for the other slab on the other side, which is also Q B times L over 2, which is the total load times the mean displacement is delta over 2. That's E. And D, the internal en energy uh, dissipated by rotation about the yield lines. It is, of course, the uh, plastic bending moment M directly projected uh, on the rotation axis it gives you the length b and with the angle theta but theta we'll see to that just later so it's m times b times theta and then this yield time is also projected to the rotation axis on the left side it's also again m times b times theta but theta of the tangents of theta equals delta divided by L over 2. But we have seen that we are talking here about very small rotation axes, very small deltas. Then 
uh, in radian, expressed in radians, then del theta is always uh, equal to uh, delta divided by L over 2 for small angles or 2 delta over L. Now, if when E is equal to D, then we can substitute E and D. We can substitute for theta. And luckily for us, the delta disappears on, in the equation. This is very lucky, otherwise we have to calculate the deflections all the time. So the delta disappears, and we can find m from this equation, which is QL squared over 8, which is a well-known formula from the uh, uh, mechanics. So we can see that in the, the method of yield lines of the method of work done, virtual work done, you can easily find the formulas as we know it. A, a slab, a concrete slab, uh, where you have drawn the yield lines, can be uh, divided in subregions of rectangulars and uh, triangles. We just now take the case of a rectangular. And when this piece of slab is rotating about the rotation axis in an angle of theta, then it will have a maximum displacement at the end of theta of delta zero. We can calculate the energy, uh, the external energy expended by the loads moving, which is a double integral of the load times delta. It's delta is just the displacement in, in dependent of x and y. We know of we assume here that q is independent of x and y. Uh, it's the uniform distributed load which is a constant. So, and we want now to look for the mean uh, uh, displacement of the slab. So this is the total load of the slab and this is the, display, the mean displacement of the slab. We, for this, we can calculate this double integral in the y direction is simple because everything is independent of y. So the, the, uh, this is converted into the integral zero to L over two of delta b dx. Then we need the equation for delta in function of x. So it is simple. When x is 0, delta equals delta 0. And when x is L over 2, delta is 0. So we uh, calculate this integral and we find that the mean value of delta is delta 0 divided by 2, which is obvious. You can see it just like that. But this is a demonstration of how to calculate the energy, the external energy. But now, once you know that for a rectangular it is delta over 2, we will not have to redo the calculations over and over again. So the energy, uh, the, uh, the ex ex uh, external energy expended by the loads moving is then equal to the total load on the slab times delta 0 divided by 2. Then the delta 0 divided by 2, this is the delta. And the QBL over 2 is the N. So you see E equals delta N. Now we'll do the same for a triangle shaped uh, portion of the slab. This is the axis X and Y. And the uh, uh, equation of, of, of this side, the equation of this side will then be y equals b over 2a times x. And the other side is this equation. Delta again is a function of x. We calculate the extended energy expended by loads moving and we make it equal to again a mean delta times the total load. Calculating the integral leads us to this formula where delta can be substituted by this form. We calculate the integral and we see that delta, the mean delta, is delta 0 divided by 3, which was expected. And then the energy, uh, the external energy is then equal to delta over 3, that's the delta and the QAB over 2, that's of course the total load N. So again, E is delta times N. 
Now let's take uh, a square. We draw the yield lines in that square, and this is the formula we will apply in short. So n times delta, the summation of all subregions of the slab, n times delta must be equal to the summation of the bending moment m, the plastic bending moment, projected uh, perpendicular to the axis of rotation, and that gives me the length l, and multiplied by the angle of rotation delta. So let's do that. It's some n delta and some ml theta. Some n delta, it's four times the same. It's four times q times l times l over two, and that for uh, and that half of it. And then the, we have seen that the mean displacement of a triangle is theta over three. So we got in total this amount for e. And for d, also, we will have four times the bending moment m projected to the rotation axis, which is L over 2. And the angle theta is, of course, delta divided by the distance, the maximum distance here, which is L over 2. And then we take this portion of the yield line, which is m projected on the rotation axis, is L over 2 times theta, which is delta divided by L over 2. And this we will have four times, this projection on this axis, then projected on this axis, and this ax rotation axis, and this rotation axis. So we have four times. You can uh, uh, simplify the equation, and then m uh, is equal to QL squared over 24. So the maximum bending moment in a square uh, slab simply supports on all sides and loaded with a uniform distributed load is QL squared over 24. But we've seen in the previous lessons that with the method of equal deflection we obtain QL squared over 16. So how can that be? It's twice the same slab. Why is it the first time QL squared over 16 and the other time QL squared over 24? Well, this is a very nice illustration of upper bound and lower bound method. The method of equal deflection is a lower bound method. It means it gives you a value q squared over 16, which gives you the lowest bearing capacity of the slab. The method of the yield lines is an upper bound method. It's q squared over 24, and it gives you the maximum load that you can have on the slab. Now we, we can generalize the system so that we do not need to calculate all the time the integrals. So when you have a rectangular and this is the yield line m, then we know the n external energy expended by the loads moving equals the total load on the slab, which is q times a times b times the mean and uh, a displacement is theta over 2. And d is m times b times the angle of rotation, which is the delta divided by the maximum distance here by a. And for a triangle, e equals the total load on the triangle, which is q times a times b divided by 2. And the mean deflection is delta over 3 and d equals the bending moment m projected on the rotation axis, which is b, and then times the theta, which is delta over a. So now every slab can now be subdivided in regions by rectangulars or triangles, and then we use those simple formulas to calculate e and d. Let's see a uh, rectangular. Let's look at a rectangular shaped uh, slab. We draw the yield lines and we calculate the energy, the external energy expended by loads moving. And you can see that we have four uh, 
we do we have four regions but we should look at a region to make life simple of triangle and rectangular and sum it up so we have for instance two triangles which has a mean displacement of theta delta over three we have two of them left and right the total load of one triangle is a times a over two the half of it times q times the mean uh, uh, displacement and times two so those two we've got and then we have four triangles one two three and four triangles which gives you this amount and then we have two rectangulars two times so one size is b minus a and the other size is a over two and the total load is q and the mean displacement is delta over two so this is very easy to instead of calculating integrals and things like that you can easily calculate the energy uh, the external energy by just uh, uh, looking at the triangles and rectangles for d it's uh, quite the same it is uh, this bending moment m projected on the rotation axis here which is a so a times m times theta which is delta divided by the maximum distance a over 2 and we got that two two times this and this projection to here and then we have this bending uh, this uh, plastic bending moment projected on this rotation axis so we have b times m times delta divided by a over 2 and we also have it two times because this one is also in this then we can uh, simplify the equation a little bit we make e equal to d and get m out of it and then you see a nice formula which gives you the bending moment in x and y direction it's always it's all every direction is the same with uh, an amount of qh squared over 24 and then a term depending on the geometry let's look let's see if this formula makes sense if uh, b is equal to a and we fill it in in this formula then we got a bending moment of q q8 squared over 24 which corresponds with the previous slide so that's fine but when b is now much larger than a much larger than a and we use this formula then you see that this formula goes to the limit the limit of this form is then m equals q a squared over 8 and this is exactly the formula of one way slabs so this formula makes sense it gives you the transition between one way slabs to two way slabs in reality the um, reinforcement of the slab is in the y direction in a different layer than in the x direction it means that the lever arm da is different from the lever arm db and the definition of a plastic bending moment is that it is equal to the reinforcement in that direction times the yield stress times 0.9 times the lever arm so let's look at the case where the plastic bending moment in the a direction is different from the bending moment in the x direction because of for instance the uh, different position of, of the different values of the lever arms and we recall it m is, 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 the, is the, the plastic bending moment in the a direction and mu m is the one in the b direction let's see what will happen calculating the external energy expanded by loads moving there's no change it's the same as the previous exercise calculating the internal energy dissipated by rotation about the yield lines ah, now we will have a difference we will have in the sense of rotation axis a this yield line projected in this direction means that you have a times mu beta because in this direction it's mu uh, sorry mu m times delta and that's twice it's 
this line projected horizontally and this yield line projected horizontally. And horizontally we have a yield line mu m. That's why it's mu m. On the other hand, we have this yield line projected to the axis B, and this is the bending moment in this direction. The bending moment is M. So we have two times BM delta over A over 2. We make we simplify the equations, we make it equal, E equals D, get M out of it, and then you see we got a similar formula as previous, but this time the coefficient mu is appearing. Now Let's see, out of practical reasons, what is now the influence of lever arm and reinforcement distribution vertical and horizontally? What is now the influence of it? Of course, we are always in the case that B must be between A and 2A. We have again the rectangular isolated slab and the plastic bending moment in this direction is MA and in the other direction it's MB. Now, when the line is on 45 degrees, what, what does that mean? In fact, you can, you have, when you have a, a yield line which is inclined, you can decompose this yield line in a small horizontal portion LB, small vertical part, small horizontal part, and so on. And you can make it infinitesimal small. So this line is in fact a composition of a summation of MB uh, plastic bending moments and MA plastic bending moments. So that will be fine for us. It means that when you are putting the reinforcement, that you don't have to put your reinforcement inclined. You can put your reinforcement in X and Y direction because of this decomposition. Now let's see again when MB is mu times MA. We know, we know by definition MA is 0.9 DA yield strength times the reinforcement in the A direction and for B a similar case. Because MB, um, we can now for, from this equation here, we can uh, isolate FID, which is the same in both cases, and then we can uh, make this equation. It means that MB equals of MB is proportional to the plastic bending moment in the A direction depending on the lever arm uh, proportionality and the reinforcement proportionality. So if you put a lot of reinforcement in B direction then of course the B direction will take up more bending moment and vice versa. Comparing those two, we see immediately that the factor mu is equal to this. We can now, the proportion of reinforcement in the two directions, we can uh, uh, call it beta. And now we are calculating with this formula the reinforcement in the direction of A, it's the bending moment in direction of A, divided by the lever arm in the direction of A. It means it takes into account the reinforcement layer where this uh, uh, reinforcement is put in. MA, we can uh, uh, use the equation that we have found. We substitute this equation in it, we got this formula, and we can <coughs> uh, so it's the same I was just looking, okay, and then we substitute, sorry, we substitute the factor mu in it, which is also a function of ASB, ASA, and DB and DA, and we arrive at this equation. But remember, that was the equation of the bending moment. And when you use the general formula for the bending moment, then you can say that the reinforcement needed in general is the bending moment M divided by 0.9 lever arm times the yield strength. This is the yield, is the, the, the effective depth uh, corresponding to the bending moment M. And when you compare those two, because it should be the same, when you compare those two, then you can see if you make D equal to um, 
you can see it to an average, an, an, an weighted average, then you, uh, you have the same formula as this. So it means that calculating the needed reinforcement when the bending moment in X and Y is the same, you should take not the lever arm, cur arm, arm curve uh, uh, like it is in reality, you should take a weighted mean or a weighted average of the, of the lever arm. But let's now see how we deal with it in practice. In practice, we know that the coefficient mu will be dependent on the lever arm and the reinforcement put. So we have two variables. Now, as a designer, I can choose that I will not put the same reinforcement in the A direction than in the B direction. In a rectangular, most of the time it will be the case, but not necessary. But most of the time it will be the case. So if you put different reinforcement in, in the two directions, then you can calculate the plastic bending moment. It means that MA is equal to MB. You use mu equals one and calculate very easily the reinforcement with the real lever arm curve, lever arm of effective depth, let's say with the real effective depth dA and dB. So you just use the formula in general. You don't care, you don't take care of the uh, difference between mu in the a direction of or in the m in the a direction or m in the b direction. You just take mu equal to one which is the most simplified case. And the reinforcement, that the bending moment that you got, M, you convert it in reinforcement, but taking care of the respectively effective depths. It's also possible when it's almost rectangular or when you want to use a mesh with no different reinforcement in X and Y direction. And you say, okay, I would like, it's practical to have the same reinforcement in the A and B direction. You can do that because of this. You can do that, then mu. You can also choose equal to one, but the bending moment that you have, you have to calculate this bending moment, but of the, the bending moment that you have, you have to calculate the reinforcement by using the mean or the uh, weighted average of the lever arms. So then you can use d equals to this formula. And both cases are okay. You can, instead of doing that, you can also say, okay, I will do a little correction of the bending moments. I take uh, mu equal in my formula, mu equals to TB over DA, and then you calculate the reinforcement with DA and DB. It is exactly the same. So you can choose 